Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I thought I would give you some tips, some do's and don'ts for reading the works of Anthony Trollope. So in the last year I've done a couple of other videos like these. I've done um, a video with tips on reading books by Jane Austen and a video with tips for reading books by Charles Dickens um, and people seem to enjoy them so I thought I would do this October um, a video with some tips and tricks, some do's and don'ts for reading Anthony Trollope. But I thought especially it might be useful to put up somewhere near the beginning of the month because um, our group read for October this year is um, The Way We Live Now which is a wonderful Anthony Trollope book and I know a few people are reading Anthony Trollope this October for the first time um, and I thought it might be useful to give some tips. Before I get started with my list of 10 tips for reading Anthony Trollope I will say that quite a lot of it is focused on like where to start with Anthony Trollope because I feel like actually Anthony Trollope is one of those authors who is just wonderful as soon as you get going. I feel like most people I know who like Anthony Trollope a bit like Anthony Trollope a lot if that makes sense. Tip number one, don't necessarily start with the series. So Anthony Trollope wrote two big six book series of interconnected novels, the Barsetshire Chronicles and the Palitzer novels, also known as the Parliamentary novels. Um, and a lot of people start with these two series because they are probably Anthony Trollope's most famous works, or they're definitely among his most famous works. And the Barsetshire Chronicles especially are a place where a lot of people start when they read Anthony Trollope. Um, partly, as I said, because the two series are his most famous things, and partly also because the first book in the Barsetshire Chronicles, The Warden, is very short, um, which, you know, not all Anthony Trollope books are. I have many other books in this pile which are not short, but The Warden is a very short, which means a lot of people end up starting with The Warden as their first Anthony Trollope book, beginning the Barsetshire Chronicles, which I don't actually think is the right place to start with Anthony Trollope, um, for a couple of reasons. One, because while The Warden is very short, it is mostly about church politics, which I love, but it's not going to be for everyone, and it is probably more like a book for people who love Victorian history and are interested in all elements of Victorian history rather than just like a great read in its own right. I mean, it has some really interesting like moral quandaries in it and I do think it's a great book but I feel like a lot of people start Anthony Trollope with The Bastard Chronicles, start reading The Warden and don't get on with it and then think they're not going to like Trollope and it's not actually necessarily that good an example of his work overall. Um, I also feel like starting with one of the series can feel quite daunting and starting, you know, a new author with um, the beginning of a long six book series is not necessarily um, the best way to go about getting into an author's work. So my first tip for Anthony Trollope and for getting into reading Andy Trollope is don't start with one of the series. And my second tip on a kind of related note is don't read the series out of order. And um, another thing I think people do quite a lot with Anthony Trollope is um, hear that The Warden isn't a great place to start with Anthony Trollope and therefore read a later book in the Barsetshire Chronicle such as Dr. Thorne, which is a very popular book, one of his most famous books, um, and is the third book in the Barsetshire Chronicles. But I personally think that if you read the Barsetshire Chronicles or the Palitzer novels out of order, then one, you will spoil yourself for reading um, the rest of that series, but also it will be quite confusing because there are a lot of characters who mean more to you if you've met them before. Um, and also like the emotional impact it's just not the same if you read those series out of order. Um, so there is the Barsetshire Chronicles and then there is the Palitzer novels and the Barsetshire Chronicles is a series of six interconnected novels all set in the fictional county of Barsetshire. Um, and then the Palitzer novels is a series of six interconnected novels, all of which look at parliament and politics and also kind of focus on a family called um, the Palisers, although so the palaces are kind of more important in some books than others. But to make matters more confusing, <laughs> the Palace novels and the Barset Chronicles are also interconnected. Um, and there are several characters who crop up in the Palace books who you would have met in the Barset Chronicles. Um, so if you read the Palace books first, you will also spoil yourself for the Barset Chronicles. So if you want to read Anthony Trollope's 12 book magnum opus, then you need to read the Barsetshire Chronicles first and then the Palitzer novels and you need to read them all in order. I think maybe chronologically in terms of publication order, the first Palitzer book might have come out before the last Barsetshire book, but my recommended reading order would be all the Barsetshire Chronicles, then the Palitzer series. Um, so the Barsetshire Chronicles being The Warden, then the Barsetshire the Towers, then Dr. Thorne, then Family Parsonage, then The Small House at Allington, then The Last Chronicle of Barset, and then you can read the Palitzers. Can you forgive her? Phineas 
Finn, the Eustace Diamonds, Phineas Redux, the Prime Minister and the Duke's children. But as I have just said, don't start with the series because it is a bit of a headache to work out the reading order. Um, also, the Barsic Chronicles I love and I think they're truly fantastic, like one of my favourite works of the show of all time, but um, it does start off with a lot of church politics. Um, and then the palettes of novels um, start off with and continue with a lot of politics politics, parliamentary politics, and also the palettes of novels are in general very upper class, um, which sometimes is fine, but sometimes I get a bit bored of reading about all the lords and ladies, but Anyway, basically, don't start with the series, and if you do start with the series, please don't read them out of order. But anyway, my third tip, a more useful tip for Anthony Trollope, is do think carefully about where to start. Anthony Trollope wrote 47 novels, so you know, there is a lot of choice, and it's really, really hard to know where to start. Um, and like I said, a lot of people end up starting with the Barsic Chronicles, and I'm not sure that is always the right decision for everyone. Sometimes you start with the Bastard Chronicles and you might love them and that's fine, but I think a lot of people do start with The Warden and then don't really love it and then kind of don't know if they're going to get into Anthony Trollope when actually there are a lot of other novels which I think would be great places to start. So I would say that in general Anthony Trollope has like two kinds of books. He has shorter focused books that are really about one thing and are about like working out that one thing. Um, and then he has longer books which have like 10 different interweaving, intersecting narratives um, all woven together in a wonderful, fun way. So I have a few recommendations on where to start depending on whether you think you would like a focused book best or a sprawling book best. So if you're interested in a shorter, more focused book, one thing I would recommend is Dr. Wirtle's School. This is a fantastic book which basically looks at a school teacher um, dealing with a moral dilemma in connection with one of his staff um, and it's really really fantastic, quite short, very focused, I really really love it. I think it gives you a good taste of Anthony Trollope as a writer. Another book that would fit into this character is The Belton Estate. Um, I only have this very fancy looking edition which I found in a second hand bookshop last month and I love. But The Belton Estate is a wonderful novel, about 350 pages, so you know, for Anthony Trollope on the shorter side. And it's basically looking at a love triangle but it's a really great Anthony Trollope book, one I really really recommend. Or you could read Lady Anna, the story of um, the daughter of an Earl who may or may not be illegitimate, bit hard to know, um, who falls in love with a tailor. So it's a book about kind of um, cross-class romance um, and um, a young woman who is determined to stick to her word, I suppose. It is it is a little bit repetitive. Like it's one of Anthony Trollope's books, which is very focused on one idea and definitely doesn't need to be 500 pages, but it is also really, really good. I don't think it's a terrible place to start with Anthony Trollope. There is also An Old Man's Love, which is um, a story about a man in his 50s um, who falls in love with a woman in her 20s. And what happens when she has to choose between a feeling of duty to him um, and a vague sense of love for a man and she hasn't seen for a long time. And then another wonderful love triangle book from Anthony Trollope is The Claverings about a young man choosing between um, someone who he's duty bound to and someone who he's very attracted to. Um, kind of similar actually to an old man's love in a weird way. Um, but yeah, The Claverings is a really really wonderful book as well. Or if you're into a big weaving sprawling plot um, with lots and lots of different narratives then you might want to read The Vicar of Bullhampton which has a love triangle, a murder and a property dispute. Or you could read He Knew Who Was Right um, which partly looks at the kind of breakdown of a marriage but also looks at various other couples and love stories and intricate class dynamics. Um, I haven't read this one for a very long time but it's very very good. Um, or you could start with The Way We Live Now which is our group read for October this year, which is a fantastic book all about class and money. Um, this is a good one to read if you like Dickens, actually. This has a lot of plots weaving together um, and a lot of different characters all kind of surrounding this man, Mr. Melmot, um, who has a lot of money and no one knows where he's got it from. Or you could read The Three Clarks, a book about three clerks and their various romantic relationships and efforts in their career. Or you could read Orley Farm, which um, brings together lots of different characters and love stories um, all surrounding a property dispute about who ought to own Orley Farm. And hopefully that is like a lot of places to start with Anthony Trollope, which are not his two big series. Um, I really recommend starting with a standalone, seeing how you go, um, and then maybe reading the Barsetch Chronicles after that if you get on with Trollope as a writer. My fourth tip for reading Anthony Trollope is don't be put off by the length. 
a lot of Anthony Trollope's books and his most famous works are very long and obviously not just standalone books that are very long but series that are very long but actually one I feel like Anthony Trollope's long books are not inaccessible <laughs> like the way we live now is so fantastic and I really think it is a very decent place to start with Anthony Trollope regardless of the length yes it is long but it is so worth it and it is so good and it's so rewarding and also I don't feel like it feels long like I know it is a long book but it doesn't feel long because it's just so good. But Anthony Trollope also wrote a lot of shorter books um, which are great and well worth your time. I've already mentioned Dr. Wirtle's School and An Old Man's Love, both of which are really short. Um, I also earlier this year read Nina Balakar, which I thought was a really interesting novel, um, which is quite an unusual book for Anthony Trollope. It's set in Prague and is a book that is basically critiquing um, anti-Semitism in Prague in the 19th century. Um, and it looks at the relationship between a Christian girl and a Jewish man and is quite a short book, but definitely worth your time. There's also Rachel Ray, which is not too long. I haven't read that one since I was a teenager, but I really enjoyed it at the time. Um, I've already mentioned The Belton Estate, which is sort of 350 pages. So it's not short, but it's definitely not long by Victorian standards. Um, and I'd also recommend Christmas at Thompson Hall, which is a collection of Christmas short stories by Anthony Trollope. I do have a copy of this somewhere, but some of my books are still in boxes. I'm still like sorting out this room um, and I can't find it anywhere. So yeah. That has some great Christmas stories in though. I would recommend it. My fifth tip for reading Anthony Trollope is do expect a bit of repetition. So I love Anthony Trollope a lot. He is one of my absolute favourite authors. He's probably like my fourth favourite author after Charles Dickens, Jane Austen and Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, but Anthony Trollope can sometimes be a bit repetitive. Definitely there are some of his books which are like longer than they need to be. Um, and also he does sometimes repeat plots a bit across his novels because you know he wrote 47 um which most of the time is fine like you could read 15 Anthony Trollope books and not find them repetitive plot wise at all but you might be unlucky and happen to read two back to back um which have a sort of similar plot structure and then it might feel a little bit disappointing and um, so it's just worth remembering that out of his 47 books there's a few plots he used a couple of times um not like completely obviously but like a few similar setups um return multiple times i suppose um but just bear with it Anthony Trollope if he's a bit repetitive because I promise it's worth it he's a wonderful writer and his books are so great trust me I promise his books are worth a tiny bit of repetition here and there my sixth tip is um don't expect a Dickens this may seem a bit random but I feel like Trollope and Dickens get like lumped together a little bit um Partly, I guess, because they were kind of contemporaries. I think Trollope was maybe three years younger than Dickens. Um, and they were writing, well, there was quite a lot of crossover in the times they were writing. Um, I think Anthony Trollope got published slightly later on in life than Dickens. Um, and then he lived quite a bit longer than Dickens. Um, so there's another like 10, 15 years after Dickens' death where Anthony Trollope still had books out, I think. But a lot of their books were kind of coming out similar times. Um, and like Dickens, Anthony Trollope did write a lot of those big, long, weaving social critique narratives and also both Charles Dickens and Anthony Trollope are very interested in class they both wrote a lot about class so I feel like people sometimes think that they're quite similar um and go into Trollope's books expecting Dickens or they um don't want to try Anthony Trollope because they don't like Dickens um but actually Charles Dickens and Anthony Trollope are very 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 different writers I would say that Anthony Trollope and Charles Dickens have a lot of similar themes but with very different executions Charles Dickens is much more like romantic with a capital R much more sentimental much more adventurous much more wild chaotic and silly much more like action-based I guess um and Trollope is much more of a writer of realism like Anthony Trollope is much more interested in like the small moving parts of society he's much more interested in like psychology and psychological realism his characters are more um psychologically believable than Charles Dickens is that fair that seems a bit mean on Charles Dickens I love Charles Dickens he's my favorite I love his exaggerated characters um but Anthony Trollope don't get me wrong he does occasionally use a caricature but Anthony Trollope in general is making a an effort to be more realistic in his characters than Charles Dickens and he's also making an effort to be more realistic in the moral gray areas of um characters their decisions and their actions i guess like i feel like Anthony Trollope is quite interested in why good people sometimes do bad things um like one thing i really like in Anthony Trollope is his um like 
young men who are just like making lots of mistakes and you're like come on you could do better i know you can do better than this um i feel like he's very good at those kind of characters um which Dickens does a little bit too, but yeah, I feel like Anthony Trollope is just, um, he's a very different writer to Dickens, and I feel like people don't always realise that, so maybe that's a good thing to think about too. My seventh tip for reading Anthony Trollope is do trust Anthony Trollope. This is going to sound a bit weird, but like, one of my favourite things about reading Anthony Trollope books is that I really trust his narratives, I really trust him as a writer, I really trust his style, and I really trust his plotting. Um, and I know I've heard other people say this about Anthony Trollope too, where like, there's one or two Anthony Trollope books where maybe I don't love the ending, but in general, I really trust him to like, give me the ending I want and to let things be okay if I need them to be okay. Um, like I really just love his storytelling. Um, so just bear with Anthony Trollope. Like sometimes I feel like some of his characters do things where you're like, oh no, why have you done that? But like everything will have a reason and Anthony Trollope will like make the ending be perfect. Um, he's very, very good at like, great plots. Um, so trust with Anthony Trollope and bear with his books to the end. My eighth tip for reading Anthony Trollope is don't worry about the politics and the fox hunting. So there are a few things that Anthony Trollope is really interested in that he writes quite a lot about, which is not going to interest everyone today. He writes a lot about politics um, and parliamentary politics, some of which is fascinating. And for me, as someone who's really interested in Victorian history, I find really, really interesting. But if you're either not as interested in Victorian history as a whole, or you're not super interested in political history, or to be honest, even if you're just not from the UK and the UK political system is really confusing to you, then you're probably not going to necessarily enjoy the political stuff, especially in books like the Palazzo series. Um, and there's a few other novels as well, which have like heavy political elements. You will still be able to enjoy an anti Trollope book without understanding all the politics. Keep reading, enjoy it, go with it. Feel free to let the parliamentary stuff like wash over you. And then there's also quite a lot of fox hunting in anti Trollope. Like, he obviously just really liked fox hunting, and there's several books which have, like, several chapters just about fox hunting, which one is, like, a bit distressing, you know, I know fox hunting was very normal in the 19th century and a lot of people did it, but, you know, it's a pretty cruel thing, so it's quite an unpleasant thing to read as a modern reader, um, and also, like, secondly, um, a lot of the chapters about fox hunting is so boring. Um, like, I love Anthony Trollope, but I do not want to read, like, 40 pages about a fox hunt. So, like, if you ever want to skim read a fox hunting chapter in Anthony Trollope, no one's going to judge you. And if anyone falls off their horse, which is the most important thing likely to happen in a fox hunting in an Anthony Trollope novel, then you'll know about it. Um, just, yeah, let those bits wash over you. The other thing, actually, which Anthony Trollope writes about quite a lot, which, um can be a bit confusing and possibly less interesting for modern readers is um, he loves inheritance law and he's really interested with the intricacies of inheritance law, which I actually find really, really interesting, but I appreciate not everyone will. There's quite a lot of stories which revolve around like inheritance law and um, who a property belongs to. And actually a lot of great plots come out of that, um, but also be prepared that like, you don't have to understand all the intricacies of Victorian inheritance law to enjoy these books. You'll be able to understand enough to follow the story. Don't worry about understanding all the context behind these things. Anthony Trollope worked in the civil service most of his life. So he's quite interested in like the mechanics behind how things work and like um, systems and structures and how they um, regulate people's lives, I suppose. But like, you don't have to be as interested in those things to really get a lot out of Anthony Trollope books because even if you're struggling with like the inheritance law plot, the characters are still wonderful, I promise. Then my final two tips for Anthony Trollope um, are the same tips I've had for both Jane Austen and Charles Dickens. I think they stand for classics as a whole. Tip number nine is do try his books on audiobook. Um, there are a lot of wonderful Anthony Trollope audiobooks on Audible and elsewhere. And Anthony Trollope's books work really well on audiobook. And um, as to be honest, I would argue that all Victorian literature does. Um, Victorian literature was written in part to be read aloud and Anthony Trollope's books are are great on audiobook. There are some really, really great audiobooks on Audible. Um, I especially recommend, there's quite a lot of Trollope audiobooks narrated by Timothy West, who is great. He's done a lot of very good Trollope audiobooks. Um, Tony Britton is also pretty good. Um, he's done a couple of Trollope audiobooks too. Anthony Trollope works really well on audiobook, um, especially because Anthony Trollope has this like um, narrative style where sometimes he intervenes um, like almost as, as a writer, as a narrative voice into the story to be like, don't worry, it's all gonna be okay, I promise. Um, and then carries on with the story, um, which is just kind of like 
works really well on audiobook um, because it feels like the, um, the writer just having a chat to you. Um, so yeah, I really, really recommend Trollope on audiobook. He's a very like cozy writer on audiobook somehow. Anyway, and my final tip, tip number 10, is do try an adaptation if you're struggling. So there are not that many Anthony Trollope adaptations out there um, because he is, you know, less famous than Charles Dickens and Jane Austen. Um, he is an author who is not as loved as he ought to be, in my opinion, um, and not as like critically acclaimed as he ought to be either. I'm still like slightly appalled that we didn't study any Anthony Trollope on my Victorian literature course at university. No Trollope. Shocking. Anyway, there are a few wonderful adaptations of Anthony Trollope books that I would like to recommend. Um, so obviously this month in October, our group read is The Way We Live Now. And there is a fantastic adaptation of The Way We Live Now from 2001 that I would really, really recommend. It's got a great cast, got Matthew McFadden in, David Suchet, Killian Murphy, like before he was famous, um, and lots of other wonderful people. It's a really, really good adaptation of The Way We Live Now and a really great um, mini series. So I really recommend that. There was also, from a similar time, I think a few years later, a wonderful mini series of He Knew He Was Right, which I'd also really, really recommend. Um, another very strong mini series um, and well worth your time. And then some of the Barsetch Chronicles have also been adapted. Um, the Warden and Barchester Towers were made into a mini series called The Barchester Chronicles um, in the 1980s with Alan Rickman in um, amongst a wonderful cast. Um, they're good too. They are from the 80s, so they are like you know, slightly overacted as was the style at the time, but they're still a really good watch. Um, and there was also a good adaptation of Dr. Thorne from 2016 that I would recommend. There is also a mini series of the Palitzer novels from the 1970s. I haven't watched them, but I do hear they're quite good and I would like to watch them at some point. Um, and definitely if you are reading along with the way we live now this Victober and you're struggling or you finished and you loved it and you want to see a mini series, then the 2001 adaptation of the way we live now is fantastic. What am I my favorite period dramas um yeah just very very good okay i think those are all my tips and tricks for reading anthony trollope i feel like this has been a very long video and i've given you lots of different places to start and not start with anthony trollope but i hope this has been useful do let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about anthony trollope and um, if you've read his books before if you like them if you're hoping to get into them in the future and that's all for now thanks so much for watching and i'll be back very soon with another bookish video mm -hmm.